Today we're going to make a lounge chair out of walnut plywood that has a built-in side table. This is the second lounge chair I made. The first one was a pretty simple prototype. For this one I added a side table and removable leather cushions that I DIY'd myself. I cut all the pieces using my Xcarve Pro CNC machine. At the end of the video I'll talk about how I plan to make these files accessible so that this project is more DIYable. I'm using Walnut Europly from Columbia Forest Products and the CNC does a great job of leaving little tabs to hold the pieces in place. I cut those with a jigsaw and then use my palm router to route them down nice and flush. For the second version of the lounge chair, I added alignment holes that are half an inch in diameter. So I can just put walnut dowels in them and it saves me a little bit of time from lining up the pieces. There's a staggered ledge that's going to hold the seat cushions. So I just made sure to clean up after the glue squeezed out. Experimented with having the alignment holes go all the way through on one side, but only about halfway through on the other so that you wouldn't see any penetrations through the walnut veneer. Trimming the walnut dowels adds an extra step, but it definitely made the glue up easier. I glued the side panels and the shelf bracket separately. This is just so I can sand and route the pieces before connecting them. The seat cushions are going to sit on this recessed ledge that's on the inside of the frames. And I just cut some little stop blocks to hold the cushions in place. I used a round over bit to put a radius on the edges and then sanded everything to 220 grit. The shelf bracket fits perfectly into the geometry of the side panels and after gluing and doweling it, I switched around to the inside and drove in a screw that will be hidden by the edge of the cushions. The cushions are going to be removable so the structure of the chair needs to stand by itself. So I cut some walnut plywood and then used my Craig pocket hole jig to drill angled screw holes so that I can attach these supports to the two side panels. I temporarily screwed on some little scrap pieces of plywood that are three quarters of an inch thick. This will just let me align these support pieces to that ledge on the side panels. I love the Craig jig stuff. It makes everything so much easier. The cushions are going to cover these support panels, so I'm able to hide the pocket holes underneath them. I went with an angular asymmetrical design for the side table. I wanted something long so that you could have a book or your phone charging, but still plenty of room for a beverage. I glued and screwed the tabletop in place. And I thought about using dowels to cover the screw heads, but I have a really good wood putty that matches this walnut pretty well. Craig sent me these handy little finishing pucks. They have a little point that just rotates out, and they're really handy for staining or painting projects. I finished the walnut with a heavy coat of Maker Brand Simple Finish. It's a plant-based wood finish that really brings out the color of the wood. For the cushions, I'm using half-inch foam that's quite firm, and I just cut out panels that are the exact size of the recesses on the chair's structure. I then placed a plywood panel that's about half an inch smaller than the foam and cut out some leather that I can wrap around both pieces and then staple in place. This is an easy way to make cushions that looks great from the front, but obviously the backside is a little bit ugly. So I cut some quarter inch thick plywood panels. I didn't have walnut veneer, so I just used oak and then stained them with an ebony stain. Now I can just screw this panel to the back of the cushions with screws that will be hidden by this, the chair's supports and have a nice clean aesthetic to the backside of the chair. The cushions just pop right in and have a nice secure fit. Now before I get into how I designed the chair and how I'm going to make the files for this design accessible, let's hear a word from the sponsor of this video, Extra Space Storage. I have a lot of furniture to make these days for both my new house and the hotel that I'm developing. And I need a storage facility where I can safely store the stuff during the construction process. Extra Space Storage is the most professional, cleanest, and most modern storage facility that I have used, and I highly recommend them. I signed up and was able to do all of the administrative work online super fast, and the facilities are super clean, well-maintained, and even came with a lock. And not a lock that could easily be cut 
off with bolt cutters or an angle grinder. It's actually integrated into the door for this unit. But what I appreciated the most was just how well the website works. You can actually see a map to pick your unit and make sure that you have direct vehicular access to it. And they have a really clear breakdown of what's available, the different sizes with nice little diagrams that suggest how much stuff you can fit in each unit. So shout out to Extra Space Storage for sponsoring this video and check the link in the description. So I really like how the chair came out, but there's a couple things I need to figure out. One is how to make these design files accessible. Now, it's really easy just to publish them for free on Easel, but as you can see in the photos of the design that I've shared, you kind of need different size chairs for people of different heights. The ergonomics and the comfort for the chair is largely dependent on how well it's suited to your particular frame. We all have different lengths between our knee and our ankle or our knee and our hip, and then not to mention our torso and our head and neck. So what we found in building a few different versions of these, that the more it's tailored to your height, the more comfortable it is. So we've been talking to Inventables about sort of making a parametric model that will output two-dimensional DXF files so that you can enter your height and it'll automatically adjust the design and output CNC ready pieces uh, for your machine. Now that might take a while. So I think we'll start by sharing the first version of the design for free on Easel while we sort of build out that parametric model. Uh, I honestly don't know if we're gonna be able to make access to that model free or not. It just depends on what they wanna uh, charge me or require from me to sort of help build that out and test it and make sure that it works. Another thing that has been brought up with these kind of designs, particularly when I do CNC projects, is I'll get a lot of comments saying, well, cool, cool story, but this isn't very DIYable. And I get that, especially when it involves a expensive CNC machine. I think there's a way around that. And what we're thinking about doing, because if you take out the CNC, all you're really using are palm router, uh, pocket jig stuff, uh, circular saw to kind of break down the sheets, jigsaw, and things like that. So, and of course, Orville sanding. So we think if we could maybe make some templates, like router templates, you could do this entire project with just a drill, a router, and maybe a circular saw. So we've been talking to Jonathan Katz Moses. You should all be following him. He's a really cool sort of woodworker mixed in with an entrepreneur. And we're looking at making either acrylic or MDF router templates. So you just make these templates, take them to your plywood, uh, double sticky tape them down or clamp them down, and then you could use that with your sort of ball bearing router bit and just trace the outline and cut the pieces out that way. Because again, the difficulty is in getting these really precise cuts that all fit together. Um, but once you got those, relatively easy. So let me know your thoughts in the description below, both on different heights. Um, if the parametric model doesn't fully work, I think we just might make a medium and large version or maybe a small, medium and large version. I think we could probably, with three sizes, get a comfortable chair for heights ranging from uh, like five foot four all the way up to like six foot four. I think three sizes could really accommodate that uh, nicely. Um, also, let me know what you thought of the, <laughs> the cushion hack. I always get comments from professional upholsterers or furniture makers, and they typically are pretty complimentary for the overall design and fabrication, but they always nail me on uh, my sloppy sort of cushion making technique. So I thought this was kind of a clever way of hiding all the staples and the little bunching up behind the boards. Uh, but let me know if you got any kind of better hacks to, to pulling that off without having, you know, a full upholstery shop set up. Anyways, I'm really excited about this design. Uh, I hope you are too. And stay tuned because we're also working on an outdoor version of this chair using thermally modified ash. Really cool stuff. All right. Thanks for watching. Talk to you later. Bye.